Hello everybody, how is it going? It is yours truly. We got a really awesome video for you today. Sorry, I'm like distracted, like dogs and shit barking everywhere. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So right here I have the hammer spring with extra power from, let me see what it says here, Wolf Spring Gun Spring Makers. So this is it, I got three of them. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, warranty information. Caution, uh, let's see, what specific purpose gun springs are normally designed and manufactured to be installed without fitting unless noted. In some instances, due to factory engineering changes, wool spring may not fit or may require fitting for proper functioning. So what we're going to do is install this in the LER 47. I already have it on the vice, so we're going to be switching views. But essentially, what I want, the issue that I'm having with the LER 47 is that uh, I had the Geisley automatics in there, but I was having issues with light primer strikes. Uh, the first time I went out and took the LER 47 to go shoot, it didn't have those problems, but the but as the, the thing became more seasoned and um, you know as it was getting broken in more, though every now and then it would have a little bit of uh, you know uh, light primer strikes and. This should mitigate it. This was recommended by Rock River Arms. I have a Rock River Arms lower and upper receiver for the LAR-47. And of course, I'm using their proprietary bolt carrier group. But of course, there are other bolt carrier groups that will work. I already mentioned that in a previous video, which is the one from Palmetto State Armory that's uh, utilized in the KS-47. And the one from Billet Rifle Systems. Any other ones that may work? I don't know. Maybe the Goboa M47 one or whatever that one's called. Um, so anyways... Let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Let's switch the views because I want to go ahead and uh, test the pull uh, the pull weight with this Wheeler Trigger Wheeler Trigger Pull Scale. Um, generally speaking, um, mil spec triggers should be roughly around uh, six to eight pounds of pull weight. Uh, I originally had the Geisley Automatics SSAE trigger in there, so that's like 3.5, 3, 3 foot pound, uh, not 3 foot pound, 3 pounds of, uh, pull weight. So, not a lot, not a lot. So, the, the, it's a little overkill, the, what's it called, the, uh, the Geisley. So, I put that in my main home defense build, and it's been fantastic. So, for this, for the LAR-47, I'm just gonna have a standard mil spec -y trigger in there with the Wolf Spring. So let's go ahead and see uh, what the pull weight is com uh, with with the standard mil spec spring, and then we're gonna compare it with the uh, with the extra power spring from Wolf Spring Makers. Let's go. All right, everyone. Right now the gun is on safety. This was safety check. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. And we are now gonna switch the fire selection mode to semi-auto. Now we are going to go ahead and test the pull weight of this trigger. A little over six pounds, a little over six pounds. We're gonna go ahead and do that again. Five and a half pounds. Resetting it. So we got five and a half pounds. One more time for good measure. A little over five and a half pounds. I have seen them go up to eight. So now we are going to go ahead and I'm gonna save you the details. If you wanna know how to install the Wolf Hammer Spring, I have three of them, so I'm going to compare them later on, but I have a video where I teach people how to install a mil spec trigger. It installs exactly the same, so I'm going to go ahead and put, this, put the, uh, the heavy spring into the LAR-47, and uh, yeah, and then we're going to do the, 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 the pull weight scale, scaling, and um, yeah, and then I'm going to show you what the, the, the main mil spec trigger looks like. Oh my god, I heard some weird noise. <laughs> so now I'm going to show you the mil spec -y trigger versus the heavy spring trigger. Alright, let's go ahead and check that out right now. 
All right, you totally can't tell, but it has been switched out. The spring, of course, so uh, one of the three wolf springs is installed on here. So this should eliminate my light primer strikes. And we are going to go ahead and see if the pull weight has changed. All right, well, charging it certainly doesn't seem to have uh, changed it at all. All right, let's go ahead and pull this. Let's see if it's even louder. Uh, so that was eight pounds. I'm not even kidding. I got that at eight pounds. Let's see if we can uh, change that. <clears throat> seven and a half pounds. Seven and a half pounds. So the so right around here where my finger is at, that's eight. So it's at seven and a half. Let's do it. Do it. Do that again. Let's do a couple more tests. So uh, already we're already seeing. A significant difference in the spring just barely a hair above seven and a half pounds all right let's just do a couple more times because I'm enjoying that uh, pulling this is a it's a little bit more uh, strenuous just a little bit or maybe I'm just using a different finger I wasn't paying attention <laughs> all right so barely seven and a half pounds once more for good measure and then i am going to show you a comparison of the wolf spring versus the mill spec spring all right so just a hair above seven and a half pounds so this is significant guys this is significant so we went from five pounds to nearly eight pounds eight pounds once i mean it'll vary it'll vary depending on on on, on quite a few things so uh, you saw it here first, guys. You saw it here. The, the wolf spring does provide extra power. That's the real deal. So let's go ahead and compare the wolf spring to the mill spec spring. All right, guys. So that was essentially the video. Now let's just go ahead and do an overview. So we already, you know, installed the wolf spring, which is this guy right here. We installed the wolf spring into the lower receiver and installs exactly like the mill spec, um, you know, uh, a hammer spring that, that you would get in any um, you know lower parts kit or whatever so that was great um, in terms of looks uh, you know this this they, they look nearly identical they look nearly identical in color uh, it, it's hard to tell immediate differences at, at, at a glance uh, however I did feel it I promise you I felt it when I was uh, installing this into the lower receiver so let me see I'm, I'm doing a little flex test right here so yeah this is uh, right here is a mill spec trigger uh, hammer spring and then this one's a heavy one yeah there's a major difference guys there's a major difference here the wolf spring works exactly as advertised it's not a joke it's not a gimmick there are you know there there are needs for a spring like this there are times where you would want to have a heavy hammer spring um, in my situation, it makes sense because I have a very unique gun and I need it to function reliably a hundred percent of the time when I fire, because it is a, you know, somewhat of a home defense weapon. Uh, as I'm making this video, there's currently a Chinese virus outbreak, China virus, and it is fucking killing people and it has completely devastated our economy. So, uh, I have a few home defense weapons. I have a Mossberg 590 shockwave. I got a Glock Gen 5 or the Glock G17. Uh, I got a, you know, I got all kinds of rifles and shit. And I got a trap set. I got, you know, but I, I also got my, my motherfucking LER 47. My custom built, 100% custom built LER 47. And I've been doing the video series, tinkering with the, the inner workings of the rifle, trying to fine tune her. And I think this is it. I think this is the last thing that I need to do. Uh, this is uh, this was recommended to me by the very friendly folks over at Rock River Arms. Go ahead and check them out at rockriverarms.com. You want to get a low receiver, contact them, and they will point you to an authorized dealer in your area, and they'll get that upper and lower receiver sent to you right away. So the way that I can tell the difference between these two is I went ahead and I marked the mill specy hammer spring. This hammer spring came out of an Aero Precision uh, lower parts kit. Uh, dude, 
it, on one hand, it's like a lower, uh, a hammer spring is a hammer spring, right? They're generally all the same. You're going to get that, you know, f five, um, five, um, what, what, what was it? How, how are these measured? Yeah, five pounds of pull weight, or it's going to be uh, around six. So five to six. I, some of these, some of the mil spec ones, I have seen them at eight, but they're very, it's very rare. I don't think it's that common. Six ish is six six point five pounds is, is probably the heaviest I've seen, uh, generally like like commonly. But but yeah, they can go up to eight. I, I've seen it. It's not impossible. Um, but these ones reliably will hit heavier. They will hit heavier. And uh, you know, once again, this is what was recommended to me. Uh, I think this spring is a lot heavier than the one that is provided in the Geisley Automatics uh, SSA E trigger. So uh, yeah, man, uh, you saw it here with your own eyes. Uh, the, the the spring works. I marked this one in black. So when I'm ready to put this in a uh, in a new firearm uh, for uh, for myself or for a client, uh, I'm I'm gonna know what I'm putting in there because these heavy hammer springs, uh, you know, they. From my understanding is that these will wear themselves out a lot sooner than the mil specy one. Um, I, I think it's uh, rated for, you know, I don't know how many shots that this is rated for. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna throw that up on the on the display, up on the screen, and uh, but but my guess is that I think that's a conservative estimate. I think this can go a lot longer. Honestly, if you take care of these, you get them lubed up nicely. These can these can last forever, man. Uh, well, not forever. That's not true. Uh, it depends how you shoot it. Depends how you shoot it. For home defense, dude, this is going to last you your lifetime. You know, if you think within that context, like, uh, you know, you're not going to go out shooting all the time. Maybe you do have a lot of firearms and, you know, you, you t they, they all take turns cycling through your range days and maybe you only go to the range maybe once every other month or whatever because, you know, money's tight and shit or you just don't have the time. You know, whatever the, I mean, that's usually my case. I would love to shoot more. I just can't because I'm so busy with my projects, with work. Even, even now that the economy has gone to shit because of the Chinese virus, China virus, um, I'm still working. I'm still busy. Uh, I, I, I got someone over, coming over. We're going to be doing it. I'm going to be making a deal with them. Uh, wish me luck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is the Wolf Hammer Spring. It works as advertised, as I stated, and uh, I love it, man. I love it. All right. Peace out, guys. Take care.